Welcome to the JHM 4.2 liter V8 intake manifold spacer installation video. Um, we're going to go over some overview on what you have to unhook to do this installation. First thing you obviously have to do is unhook the engine covers with three little fasteners. They pop right off. They just drop in these little spots. Other one pops right off. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go over every little connection that you're going to have to worry about when doing this installation just to kind of cover our game plan here. Okay, one of the first things to get out of the way to make it easier is to get the intake, the uh, fuel rail off. The fuel rail is held on by one, two, three, four bolts. So just undo those four 10 millimeter bolts and then you just swing the fuel rail out of the way and you leave the fuel line hooked up. There's no reason to unhook it. There's only one fuel line because this is a returnless style fuel injection system. So you're going to unhook that, just move it out of the way. If you know, put a fender cover if you're worried about scratching the fender or just stick it, you know, up there out of the way. So you get the, the fuel rail out of the way and when you undo the fuel rail you got to remember to undo the injector connectors and those have little buttons you got to push right there. See the little button? you got to hit and then they pop off and they're all kind of interconnected so the, the little button you unhook all those so that way you can get the fuel rail off. Once the fuel rail is off you got to then undo the bolts on the intake manifold but before that you obviously want to unhook some certain connections. A couple of those connections are these two wires near the front of the motor. Um, you could get these later but if you can get them now it would be great. It gives you a little bit more slack. These are for knock sensors those two connectors. Um, you also have to worry about on this side there's a vacuum line you can see it right here you need to unhook then near the back of the motor you need to unhook this vacuum line right here for the brake booster you need to take your MAF boot off which is one hose clamp two hose clamp and then a fitting right here and then once that's off then you're gonna go ahead you know near your oil filter there's a couple connections you're gonna have to undo there's one vacuum line down here you're going to want to unhook. It's got like a reused type clamp and that's a vacuum line. You can swing that out of the way. Then you got two coolant lines and there's one right there. You can see there's a clamp on there now. This is because we just finished the installation but this would be a one-time reuse clamp that you'd have to undo. And same with this one right here. So two there and then this clamp right here for the breather. So once all those lines are unhooked, so there's two coolant, one breather, one vacuum that stuff's out of the way. You got the MAF boot out of the way. You got the brake booster line out of the way. Then you want to unhook the connector for your um, drive-by wire throttle body. And that's easily done by you want to push up on this tab right here. And what it does is it releases a flap up inside. And then that would come off. And then over here there's a couple vacuum lines hooked to this little splitter. So we can get a good shot of it here. There's like a, a T right here. You can see this T. And there's a vacuum line going near the front of the motor, so you want to unhook the vacuum line here. And then there's another one going down here and over. So you're going to unhook that, those two vacuum line connections. Once you got that, you're pretty much home free. Then you're going to want to undo the seven bolts for the intake manifold. There's only seven per side. You only undo the Allen bolts. Um, like if you see here, see so you got a Torx and an Allen. You only do the Allen. You basically do the outer perimeter in like a U-shape around. So it'll be, there's two near the front, there's two in the back, and there's three down along the, the cylinder head. Both sides. So seven per side. They're five millimeter Allen. And those are 14 in all. And once you get those off, the intake manifold should be easy to move around. At that point, you'll pick the air manifold up near the back. You'll lift it over the oil filter a little bit. And then you got to unhook some more connections up here. Up here, there's going to be a large vacuum line, about quarter inch in size near these connectors and if you hadn't undone these connectors already you're not going to have a lot of slack so you can probably unplug these connectors at this point and then the connectors have to be slid out of these metal brackets they're in. You can see it's in a metal bracket. Then after it's out of the metal bracket that's out of the way. Then there's two more of those over here. You can't see them right now but when the manifold's up and over you can do it and you're going to go ahead and pull them out of those brackets and then you need to unhook these two wires here. There's a gray wire. You can see the connector right there and then there's a black connector down in there as well. So you got a black and a gray sitting right there. There you go. You can see the there's the black 
There's the gray. So black, gray. We got knock sensor wires here, knock sensor wires there. We got vacuum line up top, vacuum line below. Two little vacuum lines here. Two coolant hoses, a vacuum line, a breather hose, a vacuum line, and a math boot. And before all that, you get the fuel rail out of the way. That's the game plan. So now we're going to go ahead and attack it. Um, we kind of wanted to give you a little game plan since, unfortunately, this video was pretty much shot, one shot, um, first install. So we're going to be a little choppy. But I think if you watch the video all the way through and see our game plan, and especially on the reassembly, we did a little better on the reassembly footage, um, you'll have a really good idea. So watch the video all the way through. Then go ahead and tackle the job. And it shouldn't be a big deal. It should only be a couple hour job. And one last thing, um, always remember when you're done, you're going to lose a little bit of coolant. You can go ahead and top off your reservoir with a little bit of water. Um, it probably only loses, you know, eight ounces, if that. Probably not even that much, maybe four ounces. And you can see this one, we haven't even topped it off, and it's still reading in the, the same zone. If you don't have Audi coolant, no big deal. I mean, a couple ounces of water aren't going to kill you. And you probably want to use purified water just to keep corrosion down. First thing, we're going to just tear right into this. Uh, we'll start off with getting these covers off. They just pop right off. They're held on. There's one, two, three little plastic points here that snap right into the bottom part. So we'll just take that off and push it off to the side. This cover as well comes right off. Same way, it's got three attaching points. One, two, three. One, two, and three. Uh, next thing you want to get off is the intake boot between the mass airflow meter and the throttle body. There are two screws for the hose clamps on this. So you're going to want to undo those. You probably don't have to undo these. It'll just make it a little easier to move the uh, intake manifold around once it's undone. So you got that off. And then what we got to worry about is we have a hose right here that attaches near the top. It hooks to a little a white T. That comes off the throttle body. And then the boot comes off. So basically the only key is undoing that, that hose right there and undoing this clamp and this clamp. And then you have the hose off. The next step is we're going to want to get into getting the bolts undone for the intake manifold. Before we undo the bolts, there are seven on each side. And you're going to see more bolts than that. You're going to see some bolts that are Torx, some that are Allen. And you only need to do the Allen bolts. Allen or hex head is what they are. And they're uh, 5 millimeter. Um, the Torx hold the two pieces of the intake manifold together. So we need to just get 7 on this side, 7 on that side. And not the Torx ones. And then we're going to have to get the manifold up. So I'm going to point out those bolts here. If you get in closely, you can see there's one bolt right there. So that's bolt number one, Allen. Then we got a Torx. We don't do that one. Then we got another Allen right there. So that's two. And then we got another Allen head. You can see it coming from that side. You can see it right here. So we got an Allen and a Torx. So you only do the Allens. And you basically do Allens all along the outer, outer row and outer edge here. You'll see them down by the injectors, but there's going to be five on top, and then there's going to be one in the corner back here as well. It's basically around the outer perimeter is where the bolts are at. So there's seven on each side of Allen's. So I'm going to loosen those bolts up. Another thing I'm going to do before I loosen the bolts up is down in here, I'm going to blow some compressed air and get any dirt residue or whatever out of there so that nothing gets down inside the motor. Um, wouldn't be a big deal, but it may affect the intake manifold seal. So I'm going to blow that out real good undo those bolts and we'll move to the next step. I'll show you guys how to take the fuel rail off. Um, what you have to do is you have to undo this one, two, three, four 10 millimeter bolts. And then the fuel rail is, the fuel injectors are snapped to the rail. So the rail will want to pull out of the intake manifold. Sometimes you gotta give it a little wiggle. And then the seals will come out of the head then what you gotta be careful, there's a vacuum line. Um, what we gotta undo is we gotta undo these connectors for the injector. And the trick for those is you gotta push down and then pull up. There's like a button on the bottom side. 
And then once those all four of those are off, I got them off here. You can see the button a little better now since I got it off. But you're basically pushing this button right here. See the little the little piece flapping out? Once that's off, it, it'll come right off the injector. So we got all four of those injectors off. And we need to do the same on this side. So once this is off, get that wire. Get that wire. It's usually easiest if you start on one side and work your way down because these these um, this plastic covering is kind of rigid. So basically we just did four bolts and one thing you want to make sure is you want to make sure all these injectors still have this big fat rubber o-ring on them on all the cylinders and what you want to do with those o-rings is you want to wipe all the dirt off of them and just put a thin layer of uh, I prefer like Vaseline so when they go back in uh, you'll want to lube those up a little bit so you can just put the fuel rail out of the way off to the side and now you can see the bolts are real easy to get to. See where we got some out? We got one. We got two. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven back there. You can see the torques in the middle. We only need to get the Allens. And then we can see this side. We got one, two, and we already unbolted this bracket right here. This bracket was bolted to the head with two 13 millimeter bolts and so now that would obviously be a lot easier to take off with the fuel rail off and so we got the two bolts back there got one there 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 and then the two up front so that's all seven on that side we just got to do two more on the back side and then we're gonna have to get this up so we can get room to get the spacers in there here are the bolts that come out of the intake manifold. They're five millimeter Allen head, um, also called hex head. So those are really easy to get to once the fuel rail's off. We already had most of them out, but there's seven on each side and they're around the outside perimeter. You do not undo the Torx ones. You just do the seven Allens on each side of the motor. And once the fuel rail's off, you can see it's a lot easier to get to. Once again, you only do the five millimeter Allen head or hex head bolts, uh, depends on what you call them and so far I've gotten some as you can see a long a long extension works really well to get to them but it's just going to be seven and it's basically going to walk around the outside edge and these ones are going to be right near the injectors and here's how the bat bolt looks so five millimeter and to take them out if you're having trouble getting them out a good set of long needle nose always help to pull the bolts out so you're going to want to make sure you get seven out of each side and the driver's side um, bolts, you'll see this 5mm Allen right here. It's a little hard to get to. There's a 13mm headed bolt right here. You can just reach in right th through here with an extension and undo this. This, get, this bolt gets in the way of undoing it. So you can see how I got it coming in there. All that bolt holds down is a bracket. And that bracket is right here. And that bracket's for pulling the motor out or installing the motor from the factory. And there's also um, another bolt for it right here where I tip my finger. So those two 13s, as soon as you get those out of the way, you'll be able to get the last couple bolts. So that 13 and that 13 I have the socket on. Then you'll be able to get the last couple bolts on this side, on the driver's side. If you're having trouble getting to this 13 millimeter bolt back here, um, what I found is uh, using a that th other 13 millimeter bolt that holds that little bracket that little motor pulling bracket. You can see my socket on there. Basically what I did is I just did a long extension and my long extension it's 3 8 drive. I snuck it in like that and then you can see there's a universal joint. So just a universal joint then a short 13. That's the easiest way to get it. You could maybe get it with an open end or something but I like extensions and universal joints but you can see how I got to that one right there. And then once that's undone then that metal bracket right here will come off and then I'll be able to get this last bolt in the corner. Now you can see the last two bolts, we got them loose here. The one sticking up there and the one right there near that vacuum hose. That vacuum hose moves right out of the way. You can see it through there. Um, I got those loose. So I got all seven done. On this side there's a hole. And you can see the two front ones are out. So now we got to move to the other side. Bolts are undone. Uh, you can see the intake manifold lifts up pretty easily. 
Um, what helps to give it a little more room to pull up is right down here, you can see this, this, this connector right here, and there's a connector right below it. There's a blue and then a black. And you'll see as I pull the intake manifold upward, they're moving with the intake manifold. So those two wires need to be unplugged. And what you'll find with these connectors is they got like a little, a little edge you gotta pull back on and slide them off. I'll get one off and then I'll show you it more up close, but it's that blue one and black one right below it. That'll give you more room to pull it up. Because we need to sneak them in through the, uh, and have more room. Okay, here's the connector off. So you're basically, you see how that lifts up when I push right there? That's what you're trying to duplicate. So when you do that and you're lifting on that, you're going from the top, so it's kind of difficult. But what you need to do is you need to push the connector down further, more engaged. And then once you can, you'll feel this come up and release. And once that come up, then you can pull it off. These are really easy to break. So what I always do is I always lift it up and I push in and you'll feel it kind of release and then it'll slide off. It should slide off easily. So I usually push pressure downward pull it up and then it should slide off. If you need a little more room here, there's a 13 millimeter bolt right here and then another one on the face of the head that hold this bracket in for pulling the motor in and out. So if you need a little more room, you can move that out of the way, but I'm able to get to it. And there's another one below it, a black one. Now to get the intake manifold completely off the car, we need to undo a couple things here. We need to undo this hose right here. You'll see it goes through the plastic fitting, so you got to be careful not to break this plastic fitting. But you should be able to get this to slide off. If you have to, you might have to loosen this permanent clamp here. Um, this goes over to the brake booster. I mean, if you want, you could probably pull it off the firewall. But somehow you got to unhook this hose. Um, another hose you need to unhook is right here. Near the, and that's going to have a temporary clamp on it. And this one has a, like a screw to, uh clamp together clamp. So we need to get these two clamps off, get these hoses out of the way, and then move to the next step. One of the best ways to undo these clamps right here is you can get a screwdriver and then you can go in here and walk it and then you can flex it apart. And then either you can change this, this clamp, Or you can, what you can do is just get a pair of like um, dikes and you just go in there and recrimp it or a CV boot clamp. That's how you get it undone. Now it's loose enough to come off. Now this hose is off, uh, you will have some coolant that comes out. This is a hose for the throttle body to, to warm it in the winter uh, to keep the throttle plates from icing. So there's that one as well removed. The other coolant go line goes on right here. And same kind of clamp. You can either reuse it or recrimp it after the fact. Or put a new one in. So there it goes, one goes right there. So that's out of the way. So the next thing you need to undo is this little breather right here. There's a hose underneath I'll have to get to. We also need to unhook the uh, drive-by wire throttle body. Same kind of clip. That's unhooked. Um, we also have a couple vacuum lines in the way here namely this one and that one. So you want to unhook it here and here. Be careful when you twist this and you don't break this plastic. So you're going to need to move this out of the way and then unhook this one as well. Another point here for these vacuum lines. Um, you obviously don't want to crack it, but what you'll find is um, you get like a pick or a screwdriver and you stick it between the plastic and the rubber, something thin, and you go in there and you free it. You kind of walk it around and get the, the seal broken, then the lines come off easier without cracking them. Now to get the breather off the back of the motor, we got one of those one-use clamps again. Um, so you gotta free that up, and then you gotta slide this off. Now the intake manifold will come up even higher. Once everything's unhooked from the back, coolant hose, coolant hose, breather hose, the throttle valve, this hose right here, um, got this little vacuum line out of the way and we got everything unhooked. We then kind of get it forward and we got to get it past this accumulator here. So you can see the intake manifolds way up and forward. And then we just, once we move it a little bit, we got to be careful. There's probably, there's a couple more things up front we got to unhook. So once it's up, we'll get the last couple things near the front off. One thing that needs to be undone now is there's two wires that, um, 
plug into like a little bracket up here. And you can see them through here. I'm trying to get a good light for you. See that little like U-shaped bracket? Just right there. There was a wire sitting that the wire needed to be slid forward and out. And you can see this blue one right here. It still needs to be just slid forward and out. And you can see I got it out now. It's basically just two U-shaped receptacles that are holding two wires that go down further into motor that keep the intake manifold from coming out. You can see them both open now. The two U-shaped. See, there you go. You see the blue connector, the two U-shaped. I pushed them both forward and out. That'll give us some more slack. Here's the vacuum that needs to be unhooked near the actuator, near the front of the, the intake manifold. This hose right here, this plastic hose needs to be unhooked and left in the car. So you'll see it goes back and you need to leave that. That also needs to come from un, from undone from the intake manifold. Now the intake manifold is completely almost out of the car. There's two more connectors, this one and this one. We got a black and a gray one. And those need to be undone. And once those two are undone, you'll be able to take the intake manifold out of the car and you'll be able to position uh, your intake spacers and gaskets. Now you can see these connectors we unhooked earlier. Obviously you probably could have unhooked them now, but it makes it a lot easier to pull this up. These need to be pushed forward and out of their little U-shaped sockets like the ones on the other side of the motor. So we're going to push these forward and slide them out. And then there's one last vacuum line. So all the electrical connectors are unplugged, like I said. But we got this one last large vacuum line. And these need to be slid out of their little sockets forward. You can see there's how it looks with those wires slid out. And then the only thing you got left is this vacuum line hooked into the T. And then the intake manifold will completely come out of the car. Now that the intake manifold's off the car, you can see I already removed the intake gaskets. And what you probably want to do is you probably want to clean all the crud out of here and keep that from messing up the seal. Um, you'll notice you got all these wires here. These ones slip into those connect those uh, little U-shaped deals on the passenger side. These connect to the front of the intake. We have this big hose that we disconnected. We have these two wires that we disconnected earlier to give us room to move it around. And these slip into the front of the intake manifold. The ends of those connectors are right down in here. And you could wait to unplug those, but it, you know if you unplug them early, it gives you a little bit of room to move this stuff around. So there's those two. Uh, another thing we have that we did along the way, we got the breather hose, we got a coolant hose, got the connector for the throttle body to power the throttle body up, and we got this vacuum line over here, coolant hose, brake booster hose, and we got this vacuum line at the front. So that's how it all looks. So the next thing we got to do is we got to lay down all of our intake spacers and uh, get ready to reassemble it. Once the tin it takes off, if you haven't broken them already, there's these little guides right here that you can't use with the intake spacer. They just are designed to help guide it in from the factory. They're little plastic ones. They, one goes here, and one goes here. There's to help from factory down the assembly line. And you need to make sure those are unscrewed, broken off, or dis discarded in some way. There's two of them. Now that we got the intake manifold off, we've got to now prepare um, the heads and everything for the JHM parts. Um, what I'm showing you here is this is the driver's side. Um, there's a bolt hole right here on the driver's side head. It's got some plastic in it. This is where that, that cone piece I showed you earlier went. It was uh, shaped like a little plastic cone. It's like a guide dowel. They either break off or they stay. If they stay, you, you want to unscrew them. Because um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put some longer studs in here for the intake spacers. So we need to get this plastic out. Luckily it's plastic so it's not a big deal. And luckily the hole goes all the way through the bottom. So to get it out, if, it, if it's broken off like this one, I just get a drill about a sixteenth of an inch. And I get it on center. You may have to tap it with like a, a punch or something. Once you get it going, it'll just run the run it straight down, it'll end up going, it'll start threading it through. 
And once it's threaded through enough, what happens is it starts sticking out the bottom underneath a little bit. You could probably see it right barely there, that little glowing thing sticking out. So then what you want to do is you either can grab it with a pair of pliers or whatever, um, and you should be good. But um, all you need to do is you need to get it down low enough to install the JHM um, guide pin that we're going to supply. It's just a stud. We're going to give you four of these to help guide it in place. And it has to go in this spot. You cannot put it in this other location. Um, but basically, if you get it down far enough to where you can just screw that in until it's hand tight and bottomed out, you're fine. It's not going to be able to go anywhere. It can't come out. It can't do anything. Um, you, but you might want to snug it up with a pair of pliers so it doesn't want to come out. But you don't have to worry about the plastic piece sticking out the bottom. If it ever came out, it's just going to sit in the valley and there's nothing really there. It's, there's nothing accessing the motor. So we have to do that on both sides. On the driver's side, it's the second hole on the inside from the back. On the passenger's side, it's the second hole from the front. So we got to get that one out. Then the, another thing we have to do is we have to um, also worry about this dowel pin up front. Get a, get a better view for you. This dowel pin right here, this one has a screw head on it. And so from the factory, you have a screw head dowel. It, just, it looks like a flat, ba flat blade. And then you have a plastic one. The plastic one usually breaks off. So you've got to get this down so you can put the JHM dowel in here. And this one we already loosened up. You just use a screwdriver on this one. And then you end up putting a JHM dowel in there as well. So I only got one with me. So you basically end up with one with here and here. So you end up with this screwed in to the second and fourth hole. You do not want to use the center hole. That's, that's a blind hole on the back of the intake. So you got to do that. You also need to clean the gasket surface um, of any dirt or debris so that everything will seal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish getting these dowels on here and then we're going to go ahead and get the intake spacers on. Um, we'll end up with the, the two supplied dowels on each time, side. So that's four dowels total you'll get from JHM. They're basically screw-in studs. And you can see what I'm using to uh, screw these dowels in. I've got my last one going here. I'm just using vice grips and I'm just grabbing it. And you can see on the dowel here, there's a little shoulder on the dowel on the short side of the dowel. You want to score, screw in the shortest portion of the thread. So there's a, a shorter portion of thread and you're going to screw that in. And as you can see, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to spin this in just until it bottoms out on the shoulder. You don't have to crank on this thing. It's you just get it like that, bottomed out. So you got to do it in the four locations. Once you get on the four locations, we'll be ready to put the spacers and the gaskets on. So we got one location, two location, three location, four locations. So now we got to worry about getting the gaskets on. Obviously you got to make sure your original gaskets are off. These surfaces are clean. Um, another thing too, anytime you got your intake manifold off, you got to be very careful not to get any dirt, um, any metal, anything down in the intake ports. And very bad. Generally, if you're working on things, you may want to put some rags in there, keep it from clogging up. But I'm just checking it with my fingers here, making sure all the surfaces feel clean. And they do. So the next step is now we've got to put on the intake gaskets. And we got to do, then do the intake spacers. So now the JHM studs are in. Um, we've got to put the gasket. And you've got to make sure you put the gasket in properly and it's clean. You'll notice on this side... goes right on. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a tight fit on the the guide stud. That's the whole point. So so we got that one on. We got a gasket on. And if you look this one, this one's got a taper. This is the passenger side head. It's got a taper back and just make sure the, the bolt holes line up. This covers a bolt hole which is why you can't put a stud in there and there isn't anything used. These just go to an open spot in the intake manifold, these studs, so not a worry. And since you only use the seven outer bolts, you'll be fine. So we do gasket first, and then now we're going to have to put the intake spacer on. Once again, make sure both sides are clean, and make sure you line up your holes. This one looks like goes this way. They're only going to go on one way. And if you see, the JHM studs just stick out a tiny bit. This is perfect to now hold the gasket in place 
so you're not fussing and fighting with the gasket and then having to deal with you know taking the intake off and on off and on so try to make sure those are in there and they're shoved down and that should be it you basically get the you go gasket spacer gasket and then you repeat the same thing for the driver side head and once you got both of the the spacers and gaskets on one gasket per you know two gaskets per spacer and one spacer per head you'll be good so that's it you just get the studs in gasket spacer then gasket do both sides and then we got to start basically lay the intake manifold back in and start hooking everything back up now we got to start prepping it to put the intake manifold on we got both spacers and gasket sets on the studs are poking out um, so now near the um, oil filter uh, housing I called an accumulator earlier it's just out of habit but this is the oil filter housing um, right here there's a breather hose and this is one of the spots where we supply you with a new clamp um, like I said earlier you probably could reuse it but uh, we made it easier by giving me a, you a brand new clamp and this clamp may be a little bit tight when you get it so you just need to back it off just enough so it slides on and it's got some looseness to it so we're going to give you that clamp um, another thing you want to prepare is you're going to probably want to get this clamp off right here this coolant line so we get the clamp off of here and then there's another coolant line up top that we'll do later but we'll get this clamp off and we'll slide on the JHM clamp and then we're going to go ahead and start trying to put this intake manifold back in here now that we laid the intake manifold in here uh, in basically sitting in a little bit we need to keep it up because we need to hook up some of this stuff that's really hard to get to um, what you'll find too is you end up kind of tilting it in as it comes in this way and you got to be careful not to ram the the gates and the doors for the intake too hard up into the core support but you'll find out you got to keep this clear when you're putting this in you got to make sure nothing falls down in there vacuum lines wiring whatever but one of the first things you got to hook up is you got this hose right here that hooks to a T it's about a quarter inch size so we got to get that on there shove it on all the way the next thing is these two little u-shaped brackets those are for the actual the wiring for the, the knock sensors we unhooked these wires early in the game you can see they don't have a lot of slack to them and you gotta make sure you put them back in the appropriate spot you'll find you gotta you're gonna have a a blue one it's gonna go in there and then the black one so I'm gonna have to stop the tape here and I'm going to, have to get this down and, and snap slide these in you see I got these in I got the blue one right here and then the black one I gotta slide in they'll pop into place once they're all the way in so I did those two that one vacuum line I did the two wires there's two more wires on the other side you gotta do the same thing with and those ones we actually went ahead and left plug in so I gotta do those next and then I'll give you a close-up of how those look. So I'm going to have to move the intake manifold around and rotate it so that we can get to those. You know, lift this side up a little higher on the driver's side, on the passenger side. So we got those wires on, and we'll hook the connectors up later. We got that one vacuum line. So now we got to go to the other side. So like I did earlier, I hooked this this hose right up here, this larger hose. I snapped those two into place. I brought the intake manifold up and forward and you could see I, I hooked up if you could see there's a blue and a black connector right here I slipped those two into place that one and that one so I didn't I never unplugged those I just had to snap them in their little U brackets and then this gray and black wire that we unhooked before I plugged this one this black and this gray one back in so now everything's plugged in up front you know it's hard to get to everything else can be done later now you want to double check and make sure you haven't damaged your gaskets that they're in place you, you may even want to consider before trying to put this in just get the intake spacer in there don't put the last gasket on because you may gouge up the top gasket you know jockeying this around and then once you're at this point then you can get your gaskets back in place and everything lined up so now at this point we pretty much just got to put it in because we've got all these hard connections this hose can hook up later and this hose over here can hook up later so just want to make sure everything's clear the big key are these once again these two slipped into the bracket here and connected black and blue black wire connected gray wire connected black and blue snapped in we can plug those in later otherwise we don't have a lot of room to move this around 
Um, you could if you wanted plug them in now, but there's just not a lot of slack in the wires. Um, it's up to you if you want to try it that way or not. So the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to jockey the intake manifold into place and then we'll make sure everything's right and start dropping the bolts in. Okay, I'm getting ready to put the intake manifold in. Um, I'm looking my spacer and everything is on on the driver's side. The passenger side, it looks like my gasket got moved around a little bit. So I'm going to reposition my gasket, get it on the dowels. Because some of the weight of the intake sometimes jockeys it off here. So we got it, got it in there. And we got to kind of slip this down. Make sure this stays up. Wires are free. Everything's good. And then we just got to push it a little bit towards the front of the car and get it to pass by the oil filter reservoir right here. And then what you want to do is once you get it on there, if your gasket's out of place, this is when you want to reposition everything and make sure all the holes you can see through them. If the gasket needs to be moved around, you know, you need to lift it up and, and push it into place. But they should sit on the dowels pretty good. And then at this point, once everything's good and in place, what you should do is double check, make sure you connect everything underneath. Nothing's trapped under the intake. Then you can put all your bolts back in, finger tight. Once you got the intake manifold in place and all the gaskets aren't pinched or choked, you want to check and make sure that you can look through and all the bolts go in easily, all seven on each side. You can see we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Allens, the JHM supplied longer bolts. And on this side we got seven as well. There's two. Three, four, five, six, seven. And once again, we ignore the torque. So these are all five millimeter. So we need to, now we want to just double check and make sure everything's still connected down there fine. And then we want to go ahead and start hooking everything else up. And uh, we're going to want to torque this intake manifold down as well. You got to remember too, when you're tightening down the intake manifold, you want to start by just getting them all just barely barely where they're just starting to touch the surface. You don't want to, you know, snug anything all the way down. You get it just where it barely touches. You don't have to be too concerned about a torque pattern when doing this, but generally you want to start from the center out. Uh, but like I said, I mean, we're not tightening anything yet. Just getting them so they barely start to grab. And then when we torque it, since we got two gaskets on each side, probably have to torque it more than one time just to make sure the torque is is holding you know as the gaskets compress so we'll start on this side now tighten this up just getting it you know no real pressure just kind of getting everything kind of snug down and then the next step is we got to torque it and based on the size of these bolts we're going to torque it to about 10 newton meters, which is about 8 foot pounds. But like I said, before you start torquing it, you just want to get everything, you know, slowly walk the intake manifold down. You know, get it where it just starts to be snug. So you'll find out as you do more bolts, some of the others will come loose. Now I'm not really putting any torque on these. Kind of getting them snug, seating the gaskets. Gotta do it over here. So you'll see that one came loose. So you just want to slowly take your time, walk the intake manifold down, go side to side, start from the center out. And once you think you got them all where they're just snug a little bit, that's when it's time to go ahead and torque it. So the next step I would do at this point would be to go ahead and torque these bolts. And it's probably best to start on the center and then just start going across, crisscross, and work your way outward. And you're going to want to do it to 10 newton meters or 8 foot pounds. And after you do it once, let the gasket settle a little bit. Now that we've got two gaskets getting crushed in there, it may settle. Do it a couple times. Do it until there's nothing torquing it down. If you got to do it two or three times, then that's what you have to do. Because what will happen once you get it warmed up, if you haven't torqued it properly in, in a couple times, it might uh, come loose on you, which isn't a big deal. But, you know, your car will start running like crap. So... That's the next step is 8 foot pounds, 10 newton meters, whichever one your torque wrench does. Start from the center out, crisscross, get it torqued, you know, let it settle for a second, 
come back and do it again until it won't take any more tightening. Okay, now we got to hook up this vacuum line. This is near the front of the motor on the passenger side. This vacuum line goes right along the cylinder head and you got to get it under the wiring harness and we, as you can see I got a pair of long needle noses to grab this hose. It's kind of in an awkward position. So I'm going to grab this hose and once you got it grabbed you can go ahead and insert this vacuum line in. You basically stick it in until it's right up against that little bump and then that line is hooked up. Okay, now we're on the back of the driver's side cylinder head, um, right near the oil filter. Um, we're going to see, we're going to find this line we unhooked earlier with the two hoses off of it. You got this plastic line coming from the front of the intake manifold, and then you got this plastic line over here. This one, you got to sneak it up and around like that. So now we got to hook this up. To this hose. Once again, this is plastic, so be careful, and you want to get it till it's right up to that little bump in the plastic. So now we can do this line. Now that one's in. So this just ends up kind of laying down and out of the way so you can get the injectors in. Now the next thing we need to work on is we need to get this breather hose to the back of the throttle body area. As you can see, I already put a hose clamp on here. It actually looks like it needs to go the other way. So we'll get the hose clamp on that JHM supplied you right here. And we're going to want to slide this on. And then we can go ahead and tighten that up. You'll notice this, this line right here, this coolant line, this one ends up kind of looping around so we can hook it up right here. So make sure you get that looped around properly before you put this breather line on. So the next thing we want to do is we'd want to tighten this. As you can see we got that breather hose tightened and on. So the next thing we put on was that coolant line and we put a JHM clamp supply clamp on it. So we're just going to have to tighten this clamp right here. And then there's this other coolant line and you see it's got to go under the throttle body like that on the other side of this check valve for the brake booster. So I'm going to tighten that clamp and that clamp and then we'll get to hooking up a couple more things. Now we need to hook this emissions hose back up. It's the one with the uh, crimp style clamp. You'll see that it hooks down in a couple spots. It hooks down right here to some of the the hose is on the back of the motor. There's like a clamp for it. And right here as well, you can see it's got another one. And then you can see it hooks up right there to a vacuum port on the intake manifold. So I'm going to get this all secured and we'll move to the next part. You can see we got that fitting hooked up, that hose to the fitting, the vacuum fitting. And you can see right here, it's got that one time, that uh, automatic clamp. I just use Allen pliers. I, mean, I just use regular ply, uh, needle nose pliers. And I tighten it there. And that one's no big deal. It's just a vacuum line. So you can reuse that clamp. And then you'll see that this is hooked up to the brake booster line, to that little grommet. And then i got to hook this back up. Before, I was able to slide this off without loosening that clamp, so it should be a good fit still. So you just pop that back together. Now we got the booster line hooked up. If you ever want to tighten these kind of clamps, there's an actual CV boot tool that's designed for this. But a pair of dikes, obviously you don't want a pair of dikes that's too sharp that will, uh, you know, cut it. But you can do that and crimp it tighter again. Um, that one just for the vacuum brake booster. Another thing you don't want to forget to hook up is the wire for the throttle body. You can see it comes in, plugs in here, and then it kind of tucks back up around the mouth throttle body. So now we got, looks like we got everything hooked up. Got all the lines. So now the next thing we need to do is we can go ahead and get the MAF boot between the throttle body and the mass airflow meter hooked up. 
and clamped on and then the last thing will probably be the fuel rail. We now have the master throttle, booty, throttle body boot on. Um, you're going to see there's only one other connection to do. It's this white black, white T that hooks to this hose right here and that's how you know which side goes to the motor because there's nothing on the side at the air box. So we just got to put that together. And then all we got to do is make sure everything's fully seated and tighten both both of the MAF, MAF boot clamps and then that's all done. Off earlier near the back of the motor back here, it there's no room for it to fit with the intake manifold spacers. This is only for you know pulling the motor and putting the motor in down the assembly line. What happens is the intake spacer put the intake manifold near the bottom of this. You can grind on this if you want and bolt it back in if you you know want it to make it look as stock as possible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that, but realistically, if you want, you can go ahead and scrap this piece. It, it's not needed. Uh, you can maybe save it if you ever want to pull your motor or something, but there's hooks on all four corners, and usually all you need is two. So um, this is not necessary, but like I said, if you want, you can clearance the bottom right here to clear the intake manifold. In case you do want to reuse this part, as you can see, all I did was put a notch in it right for one of the injector bosses. You'll see where it goes on. That's all you need to do is have a little notch for the injector boss that sticks out from the intake manifold where the injector goes in. And then the thing, this part will drop right in there. But like I said, it's really not needed. It's just for pulling the motor out. So I mean, you can always just hold on to it. And you can see I got the one 13 millimeter bolt in. and then the other one in. So I'll just go ahead and put these bolts all the rest of the way in. I'll tighten them up and that bracket will be in. But once again, if you don't want to put it in, no big deal. Remember earlier, at the beginning of the video, we unhooked those two connectors. So now we're revisiting that. If you notice, I got this wiring harness behind this motor pole bracket, which is not necessary. So now it's in the right spot. So that's all in the right spot. So now I'm just going to plug those two in, the blue and the black for the knock sensors. You can see we got these connectors plugged in now. You'll hear them pop and make a little snap noise when they plug in. So those are all plugged in. We got all our lines. Only thing really left is a fuel rail. So as you can see I got the fuel rail over here. And what you want to do before you stick it in is you look at the injector seals um, these look fine. This car's only got like 40, 50,000 miles. If you're concerned about it, um, you can replace them. They're very cheap. Um, you can contact JH Motorsports, but uh, they should be fine. What you want to do is you want to wipe each one of these off, and then I'd put a thin layer of silicone or a real thin grease, um, you, you know, even a little wheel bearing grease, something, so that way they slide right into the intake manifold. So I'm going to clean them off. I'm going to just put a thin haze of grease on them, and then we're going to drop the fuel rail back on. Now we're ready to put the fuel rail back in place. You can see we still just got it hooked to the fuel line, so no big deal. Um, when you drop it in, you're going to need to line up all the injectors with their, their appropriate holes in the intake manifold. You're going to need to make sure the wiring harnesses stay out of the way so you don't break them or crack them. And you shouldn't have to force it. Once you get the injectors lined up, they'll just slide right in. You can see that one just bottomed out now, slid right in. Get these four over here lined up. And it's popped into place. So now all, all of them are down and in place. All we got to do is tighten these. These are the 10 millimeter headed uh, bolts. There's one, two, three, four of the 10 millimeter head bolts. And these, you know, there's probably a torque spec of about, you know, 8 foot pound, 10 newton meter based on the size of the bolt. But realistically, um, you know, you just get them snug. They're just for the fuel rail. No real other purpose. If you need a little bit of room, you might have to push the fuel rail towards the rear of the vehicle a little bit. You know, due to the new position the intake manifold being a little bit higher. You do have adequate clearance. It is a little tight on the uh, oil filter. 
So yeah, so I'm going to tighten these down. And then basically we'll end up then just snapping these injector connectors all back into place. Now that the uh, fuel injector rail is bolted down, you know you want to double check, make sure everything's connected. Then you can put your cosmetic pieces on. Drops into place. That drops into place. It almost looks stock. You can't really tell that you even got the spacers on there. Uh, one last little step is going to be to reinstall the weather stripping for the hood. And that just pops on along the edge here. You just need to walk it on all the way around. Now the only step left is to, you know, make sure everything's good, double check. And then you'll go ahead and start the car up. Um, when you first start it up, it may not run perfect. You know, you disturbed a lot of connections and a lot of things with the motor, so should be okay if it's choppy for a couple seconds. Um, go ahead and you know let it idle for a while and make sure no check engine light comes on. Um, if you get a check engine light, you can always pull the codes. If you think it's a phantom code, maybe from messing with the motor, unhook the battery for a couple minutes if you don't have a code scanner and then you know restart it but if a code persists you know double check make sure you have plugged everything back in and then worst case you know get it scanned and then if you get the code you know it'll give you a really good idea of what you left unhooked or unhooked properly but there's not too many major connections other than the knock sensors and a couple vacuum lines so that's it you're ready to enjoy the cooler intake manifold <laughs>